Hello, welcome to another video report. It's the 21st of September. <laughs> In the middle of a crazy season of, of activity and, and ministries, I'm at the farmhouse, as you might imagine, and it's slightly drizzling. I'm hoping I can get this done without ruining the, the cell phone. <laughs> and we've had crazy winds and branches are down. Fortunately, there's no tree blocking the access to the farmhouse because in two days we have an intensive institute and a bunch of people coming in for it. But around town, there's branches down. Anything that's not tied down is blown away. And the farmhouse, there's stuff blown over everywhere. But hey, that's what it was. And last night at about 4 a.m., it wasn't much sleeping going on after that with all the racket with the wind and so forth. But still, let me get my cheat sheet here because otherwise I will not remember what I should at least mention. Uh, let me see. First of all, okay, so... My, my father-in-law Mimi's dad is here and he's been here for four weeks he leaves next Thursday and yesterday oh you can't see it but yesterday he and Mimi actually hiked up to the Arranoites which is like 27 2800 feet up there and we've taken hundreds of people but never ever anyone 89 years old <laughs> They went up slowly, but they went up, and he's got a picture touching the mushroom. So those of you who have been up there, you know what he went through. And yeah, he went up there. He went up the steep way and came down the other way with Mimi, and it's starting to rain. Okay, so, uh, but he has been all over the place. He's been to Portugal, the Mediterranean, just visiting missionaries and churches from the former ministry. It's starting to rain. Okay, so on Saturday, we have the Intensive Institute. We're expecting... Anywhere from 70 to 80 adults, which is almost our, to capacity for us. That day is out, so Mimi and Madeline and Jordan are doing the meal. That's a lot of people to feed in a very tiny space. So, yeah, it's going to be a challenge. But uh, Alfredo will be our teacher again on the first part of the book of Exodus. And we'll have a great institute, Lord willing. And there's always wonderful spirit as everyone comes because they love the word and they love to learn about it. So Mimi and I leave for the States next Tuesday to spend seven Sundays visiting supporting churches. We're pretty much booked up already. A lot of preps for that. And we've just had retreats, various retreats and so forth. So it's been like, whoa, it's right around the corner getting things ready for that. We have a missionary team retreat coming up in December, our 18th, and there's there's plenty to do there. Please pray that we'll yeah, be able to coordinate everything. And there are, some, there are friends who, who give every year so that we can help the missionaries send their kids. So if you have any questions on that, just write me and we'll uh we'll go forward with that one thing i haven't even thought about except well i've thought about it that's it and that is the christmas postcard if we do one this year among everything else so uh, appreciate your prayers for that and then i'm gonna do a video with the drone if it stops raining because i'm not going to be able to do it while it rains but i want to show you some of the work we've done with the track hoe in preps for big rains and so we've done a number of things here and down at the entrance and so we've been using it slowly learning how to get it how to use it but man one of those shovels does hours of work <laughs> almost uh, manual labor type so it's really really been good and hopefully i think we're pretty ready for some good rains we had rain over the night overnight and it's all muddy and everything but you know not not tons it was a lot of a lot of uh, wind more than rain so i uh, hope to do that and get you some some footage of the of the various jobs that we've done with the track hoe and i'll probably tack it on the end of this report and then one more thing i've been working for several months uh, sort of quietly in the background on a on a book project and the hope to publish this book in the next few days maybe in the next week or so and it's called The Wonder of Prophecy. And although my ultimate goal is to have it in Spanish, because, yeah, in English, there are a million books on prophecy. This one is not your typical book on end times or interpretation, you know, wild ideas or fresh insight on interpretations of the end time prophecies. No, it, it is a book on prophecy. The, it's called The Wonder of Prophecy, the absolutely incredible thing that it is 
for an eternal God, infinite God, to actually communicate with finite beings like us. And so it goes, it's basically a written form of the Intensive Institute that I taught earlier this year on prophecy. So maybe it'll be a blessing to some of you. I definitely want to get it in Spanish because there, I know there isn't nearly as much uh, good writing on prophecy in Spanish. And so hopefully it'll be a blessing to our people and, and others. So it is starting to rain. So I'm cutting this shorter than I was even going to. That's the most important thing. Those are the most important things on my list. So goodbye. God bless you. Thanks for praying and for communicating. See you next time. And thanks for praying for Saturday, our special all-day intensive institute on the book of Exodus that'll take place right over there at the farmhouse. And that is Sergeant Isar, head of our security department. <laughs> Fly over now towards the entrance to show you some of the things we've done. Let me see, first of all, yeah, I go up the landslide. On the right there, down below, you can see a trench that I dug to get all of the rain that comes off of the right side there, the whole valley going all the way up to the top of the mountain. Some of it will come down there and then it would just go down, you know, all over the landslide <clears throat> and soak it and all that. So that should catch the rain. It's not the neatest job in the world. It's actually my first one. And so, but it, it'll it definitely catch the water, take it down there, and then it'll go up to that other big, bigger trench that cuts diagonally across the landslide. Uh, I think I go down here for a second to show you one of the, sorry for the computer fan. Hopefully it's not messing up this audio too much because yeah the laptop's a little old and starting to complain <laughs> so there was a little tiny little elm tree there protected by some of the mesh that the ebc team set up this this summer so i'm going i'm a little far from the drone so i was a little scared i might lose connection but in the end it seemed to work okay as long as there's no interruptions here. There's the culvert, not a hundred percent clean. I wasn't able to clean it all the way from the big rocks and so forth, but pretty pretty much free and should catch the rain if we get, you know, not so much gully washers, although they're them too, but persistent rain over three, four, five days begins to really accumulate. So that part, I, I'm much more comfortable with the top of the landslide now. You can see that large trench cutting across the landslide diagonally there. Steve dug that one for us. And then you can see right now below, I started a sort of a shallow trench across the gravel to catch water that would normally go down and everywhere, down below the green gate. And I trenched to the side Something we've wanted to do for a long time, but man, to do it by hand was ugh, was a huge job. So it just, just didn't get done. Well, I was able to do it in just a couple of hours of work with the, with the track hose. So that's ready for a bunch of water. Okay, and I think that's it for this time. And we're very grateful. That fence has seen, uh, that gate has seen better days but it's not at the very top of the priority list right now. So tomorrow, at this time of the morning, we'll have over 80 people in the first session. The numbers have gone over 80. Okay, God bless you. Goodbye.